Hey, so in this section, I'll talk a little bit about why I don't soak my frictions. Um, as folks watch my videos on, you know, reassembly and um, watching me set up all the uh, clutch packs and, um, you know, measuring for clearance and all that good stuff, uh, you undoubtedly notice that I don't soak any of my frictions in transmission fluid before I install them. Um, I install them dry, I measure my um, clutch clearances dry, and ultimately, um, you know, the transmission goes out the door largely dry. I do soak my bands, but I don't soak my frictions. And, you know, you may be wondering why at this point. So, I've been getting a lot of questions too. So, I wanted to take a minute or two to address that. Um, Basically, what everybody tells you is that your frictions and your band, anything that um, you know, has friction material on it, must be soaked in fresh transmission fluid prior to installation into the transmission. Technically, that's not 100% correct. Um, technically, the uh, clutches, the bands, anything that has friction material on it has to be soaked prior to being put to work for at least 20 minutes to a half hour. So the difference between the time the transmission is assembled and the time that that you know, clutch or that band gets put to work is likely to be a fairly significant amount of time, at least relative to you know, how long it usually takes for clutches to more or less dry out. So when you complete a transmission and you stab it in the vehicle, um, the first thing you're going to do once it's fully installed and everything's bolted up and you know ready to run is fill it with fluid. The very next thing you're going to do once it's as full as it can be is you're going to start up the engine, idle it for a little bit, and let the fluid circulate throughout the transmission. And you're going to repeat this process for the next five or ten minutes um, until that that transmission is is as full as you can get it without actually put it in you know putting it into gear and driving it around. So during this time, your frictions, your bands, everything that has friction material on it is going to get fully saturated with transmission fluid and it's going to soak in. So now you might be saying, well, if that's the case, so what? Why not soak them up front anyway? Well, here's the main reason. When you have a transmission fully assembled like this here on the bench or on a fixture, um, no valve body or nothing installed on the belly, just the barrel of the case, what you want to be able to do is spin this input shaft, okay, and be able to tell just by spinning it if everything is good inside the case. Um, if everything is good inside, you won't feel any kind of binding, any kind of resistance, anything, you know, galling or, or you know, otherwise um, unusual. And what that will tell you, either confirm or deny, is that everything is been assembled correctly. Um, there's been a few times where I've caught uh, my own errors in either setting up a clutch or installing something wrong or backwards and not realizing it until I had everything together like this and when I spun the shaft it felt different, it felt weird. Uh, I was either getting a bind up or I was spinning the input shaft and I was watching the output shaft spin in a one-to-one -one ratio. Uh, that should never happen. Uh, if you see that, chances are something, either one or more clutches inside the case, are bound up, which means they have insufficient clearance and it actually happened to me once. And I was spinning the shaft and I was watching the output shaft spin like literally one for one, um, put both hands one on each and sure enough it was still spinning. Uh, so when I tore it back down, looked at the forward clutch, and it was on a 4L60E by the way. Um, I had like literally no clearance in the forward clutch and I don't know how I missed it, I just missed it. Um, but you know, I mean that happens, we're all human and we make mistakes, but we want to try to build in um, you know, methodologies into our process that allow us to catch those mistakes before uh, the customer catches them, right? We don't want our customers to be our quality control, we want to do that ourselves um, so that when transmission is installed and it's taken for a test drive, everything's good. So anyway, uh, that's the main reason why I don't soak uh, clutch packs because if you soak your frictions, especially on heavy duty units like the 4L80E, TH400, 4L75s, or I mean that's not a heavy duty unit, but you know 4L100s, 5L110s, etc., um, it's going to be nearly impossible to spin this shaft um, to where it's 
going to spin easily enough to where you'll be able to tell if there's something wrong inside the case. I mean, once those frictions are laden with fluid and kind of adhering to the steels, I mean, it's, it's just going to take uh, sometimes vice grips on the uh, shaft to turn it. And you're never going to know if something's wrong in there or not. So that's why I don't do it. Um, you know, obviously, I'm not going to sit here and tell you, no, you should never soak your frictions. I mean, you do what you want. But uh, that's my rationale for why I don't soak them. If you have any questions, comments, go ahead and leave them below. Uh, otherwise, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.